So you didn't miss anything, right? Right? And do you remember what was his message? Mm. What was his message? Huh? Huh? Church is a family. Hallelujah! <laughs> Normally people forget it right at the door. Church is a family. It's not an organization. It's God's ohana. You are all related by blood of Jesus. Your brothers and sisters. Turn to your neighbor. You are my sister or my brother. We are related by the blood of Jesus. Yes. Amen. You think you came here. You chose this church to be here. Think again. Jesus said, you did not choose me. I chose you. And God has chosen you, Jesus has chosen you to be in this ohana with your gifts and talents for a purpose to bring this church to the next level. Hallelujah. You have a great mission here. You are not just here by an accident. Tell each other, you're not here by accident. You you are here with a purpose. Amen? And what does family, God's family do? What does family, I mean your earthly family, when they gather together, what do they do? They eat together, right? They weep together, they rejoice together, they argue one another, right? They get mad at each other sometimes. They disappointed at each other. They dislike so and so, something, my brother, my sister, what they were doing. But you don't have to like what they do in order for you to what? Love them. And because you haven't, did you have a choice? Did you have a choice who should be your mem the family member? Who should be your brothers and sisters? No, you didn't, right? It's like a Pokela Ohana. You didn't have a choice. God has uh, chosen each one of you sent here with a great purpose, you see? And we argue, we grumble, we mad at each other, or, but we still stick together, tolerate each other. We still what? Love one another. That's what the God's Ohana means. That's what the Ohana means, right? Or Hawaiians. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. And most important thing that Ohana does, all together, put um, feelings aside, put um, misunderstanding aside. What do they do? They love to celebrate the events. I mean, Christmas, Thanksgiving, your grandkids graduation, et cetera, et cetera. You love to together, get together. Yeah, this whole family get together for occasion, for celebration. And that's what we do as brothers and sisters of Jesus Christ. We gather together, celebrate our Lord Jesus, what he has done, and remember what he asked us to do. Got it? And uh, Ten Commandments, somebody asked me, keep the Sabbath. And Sabbath is a Saturday. Why do we show up on Sunday? Anybody know? Huh? Je yes, Jesus rose from the dead, what? On Sunday. We are celebrating his death and resurrection every Sunday, especially Communion Sunday. Because Jesus says what? Do this in remembrance of me. Jesus never asked us to do this remembrance of him, right? Remembrance of him. That's why we do. But today's passage, Apostle Paul gave a communion, instruction of communion, and a lot of people get caught up with that. Because he says that I will receive from the Lord, right, in the beginning, and so I pass it out 
unto you, and this is what you should do. And then verse 27, he says what? Whoever, uh, whoever eats uh, this bread and this cup, drink this cup, huh? unworthy manner, you are sinning against the body of Christ. And this uh, interpretation says, therefore, our NIV says, so then, whoever takes the bread and it drink the cup with unworthy manner. What is he talking about, unworthy manner? What is a worthy manner then, right? So that we all can be confident that we come to the communion table with a worthy manner, not unworthy manner, right? All right. So whenever the sentence, paragraph starts with so then or therefore, that means we've got to what? Read what was ahead of it and read a little bit behind it in order to get the whole shebang of what he was talking about, right? Am I right? Yes. All right. So what Apostle Paul was telling the people and us before so then, before therefore whoever it's unworthy manner, he says, huh? we just read, right? The, on the night, our Lord Jesus was betrayed, and he took the bread, and after giving thanks to his father, and he broke it, and gave it to his disciples, and do this in remembrance of me, and the same manner, and do the cup, right? And then verse 26, before 27, he said this. Let's read it together. Whenever you eat drink this cup, you... All right? So, whenever you eat the cup, <laughs> eat the cup, <laughs> I get too excited. Whenever you eat the bread and drink the cup of uh, his blood shed for you, then what? Well, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. That means go make a disciples of all nations, isn't it? Hmm? Proclaim the gospel. How do we do that? Do this. What is do this? Just doing the ritual, celebrating communion table and come to receive communion? Is that all about it? Do this means Jesus broke the bread and the visualization of his body is broken for humanity. The cup was visualization of his blood being shed for the humanity to show the whole humanity how much God loves us. So do this means you break your body, you shed your blood, what? To show how much you love one another. That's what Jesus afterwards said. I give you a new commandment. Love one another, what? As I have loved you. Do this. Oh, are we doing that? Mm, I'm not. So, yes! <laughs> Once in a blue moon. Or some people are good at it. Some people fail. But we, nobody is doing it 24-7. Nobody is doing it as a, just as a Jesus has done. So are we all come to the communion table unworthy manner? Because we fall short of God's commitment. We fall short of God's grace. We fall short of expressing and words and actions. Do this. And proclaiming the gospel until he comes, until we go heaven or the return, right? Amen. So, are we worthy? Are we coming to the table in a worthy manner? Ooh. 
So therefore, I have sinned against God. I have, a, I have a for sure of God's glory. So I will just sit tight. I don't want to sin against the body of Christ anymore. Sit tight and refuse the communion. Is that the right attitude? Huh? No. How do you know it's not? Huh? Huh? Verse 28. Don't try to guess. Right? Verse 28. Let's read. But let a man what? Examine himself. When we shall examine ourselves? Huh? When should we? Oh. It didn't say before. It should say before we take the communion, right? Before we come to the communion table. We even know we have committed. We know our sins. And there are sins that we do not realize. There are sins we wink at our own eyes. Compared to so and so, I'm fine, right? We compare our sins against the criminals. Then we are very innocent. But we need to compare to the word of God against the word of God. And we may not know. So when we come to the communion table, we've got to open our hearts, be willing to be what surrender to God's Hmm? God's conviction. Don't let the Holy Spirit convict you. Let the Holy Spirit open your heart fully. Be humble, honest. That is what worthy manner is. Now, the Apostle Paul wrote this letter to the Corinthians. In, in, the, in the back, uh, they say, what? If you are hungry, you eat at home. Right? Did you, did you read that? Wasn't it odd? Well, what the heck is he talking about? Guess what? During that time, communion is a uh, reinvention of what the Lord Jesus, the Lord's table, and the remembering what he has done. Right? And they use what? True wine and fresh, fresh bread, uh, baked bread. And so they are new in Christianity and they forgot the true meaning of attending the communion. They just come hungry and chow down and drink, get drunk. So some people like, uh, some people didn't get to eat and drink. Have a fellowship, like our church. You know, sometimes I'm so busy after the service, right? And at the end of it, I go at the table. Nothing was there, all gone. So that's what Apostle Paul is talking about. Carelessness approaching to the communion table, not thinking about the meaning, not thinking about other people, not thinking about how grateful that our Lord has done for us, what he has commanded us to do. He sacrificed his life so that we can have an abundant life. We can have a full of life, an eternal life. And full of life is living out God's love and grace. Every moment we take our breath. If we haven't done we were impatient to one another. We were mad. Or this is my way, highway. What, what, what do you say? Highway. My way is highway. My way or the highway. All right. And if we have done that, and I am, most of us have committed once again those times that this is a, a spiritual shot 
cleanse our blood, cleanse our ego, cleanse our stupidity. Cleanse me, O oh Lord God. Forgive me, O oh Lord God. What if you don't want to let go of uh, your own forgiveness even though you come to, so you, you, you're not going to take a communion? No. Lord, acknowledge your stubbornness. Lord, this one thing I cannot let go, I, my resentment, I cannot. Or one thing, the, one of my will, one of my plan, I cannot. It doesn't matter what you want me to do, I'm just going to go for it. Then you should uh, avoid communion? No. With your attitude, come. Tell the Lord, Lord, I acknowledge, I admit my stubbornness. I admit my stupidity, but I cannot let go. Do something for me. If you believe in the power of the blood, you believe the broken body of Jesus, and you come forth in confidence, knowing the depth of our hearts, Jesus still loves you and me. He knows we can't hide lying eyes to our Lord Jesus, but he still loves us. He still will not let go of us. No one can snatch you out of hands of our Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. This is amazing grace. Isn't it? Yes. That's attitude. That's the mindset. That is the worthy manner. Amen? Amen. You know, on the night when Jesus was betrayed, Judas Iscariot came with soldiers. And when he said to the soldiers, the one I kiss, that's the one you arrest him. That's the one who is Jesus, right? And Jesus said, why are you here? And NIV says to Judas, Jesus said, do what you came to do. Even though we didn't come to betray Jesus, we didn't come to betray one another, it's a good question to ask oneself. Why are you here? We are here to what? Celebrate Jesus, what Jesus has done. I hope all of our purpose here this morning is that, to express our love, to honor, adore, worship our Lord God, celebrate what he has done. He redeemed us, dying, destroyed our death, rising, from the dead, he restored our life. We respond to his invitation. What is it? Do this in remembrance of me. Amen? Amen. So as you come for the communion table, let us what? examine ourselves. What's in our hearts? What's in our attitudes? What's going on in our lives so that the grace and love of our God renew our lives, cleanse us, restore our faith, and revitalize our spiritual journey so that we can live a life worthy of his sacrifice, worthy of being children of a most high God. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let us pray.